All right, so here's video number two. Uh, still working on the wheel bearing on the Pontiac Grand Am. Um, <clears throat> I decided I was going to do it in two different sections just because uh, time, really. Um, I didn't want the video to be too long, people to lose interest. So let's get back after it. So we left off on getting this, the, well, the rest of the bearing out. So you got to pull that CV out of the way to get your ABS sensor out. Let's see. There we go. All right. So we got that out. Um, that is actually supposed to sit like that. Um, it holds all the, the guts of your bearing in, all your balls, all that stuff. Um, obviously, it was, it was in bad shape, so let's go ahead and grab the new one. Here's the new one, and we'll go ahead and put it in. Um, don't forget your dust shield if you want it. Uh, I mean, a lot of people just take them off because eventually they get bent up and they rub and just make a racket but in this case this one's not in bad shape I'm gonna keep it so you want to get that ABS sensor through there well maybe After you get all that in, you want to get your splines lined up on your CV and your bearing there. It's kind of a bear, but just keep working and you'll get it. The trouble that you have is trying to line up the splines and your bolt holes. Um, I mean, I guess. If I can't get it, I'll kick the car in neutral, make sure the other side is off the ground as well, and just turn it. But I'd really like for it to just line up. So, after you get that on, just to hold it in place, go ahead and put your bolt and washer back on. That way it doesn't fall off and tear up your ABS sensor. Alright, so go ahead and start putting bolts back together. Alright, now we're going to have to kick it in neutral and roll. Alright, so put the car in neutral, rolled the CV around so that I could get the bolt holes lined up. Now that they now that everything's lined up, we can go ahead and tighten this new wheel bearing up.
also one thing to note um, everything has a torque spec uh, I'm not entirely sure what the torque specs are but I am gonna look it up and uh, we'll uh, get the torque specs and torque this thing down and get it all set up Let's see if we can get the camera now this particular bolt you have to leave the uh, ABS sensor loose while you tighten this bolt because it clips into this bracket and then the clip from the uh, engine bay plugs in and they both sit right in front of that bolt so make sure you leave all that stuff loose don't plug it up until you're ready to put everything back together so that will just stay loose for now until we get everything buttoned up uh, it is very important to make sure that you tighten these down to torque spec because I mean you're talking about your hub assembly if that comes loose your tire is going to fly off and I don't know about a lot of you guys that are going to watch this video but I've got kids and I'm not going to put their lives in danger because I wanted to take a shortcut and not torque everything down. I know they were tight, but I don't know how tight. <clears throat> All right. I'm gonna look up the torque spec and I'll be right back. All right, so I got the torque spec. Hopefully the torque wrench fits in here. I've already got it set up to the specification. It fits, but barely. I need to get a uh, 3 8 drive torque wrench. Oh, God. It's hard to do in a bind like that. long extension for the top one there. This is the one I'm worried about having the, the room to... Oh, we got plenty of room. So that's all torqued down. Now we can hook our ABS sensor back up. It's got this metal clip right here that runs down and then back up on this bracket. Okay, ABS sensor's hooked up. Give it a little tug on the connector, make sure it's not gonna come off, everything clipped in. Okay, now, as far as your 
CV. Which size is this? All right, as far as your CV nut, um, we're just gonna kind of finger tighten that until we get the wheel back on it and get it back on the ground. Just because it makes it a little bit easier to get get it good and tight. Um, beating on that with a hammer kind of frayed out the this has got a little clip on it that holds that washer on I don't know if you can see that but uh, this clip right here where we had to beat on it to get the CV to break loose from the old hub assembly is now frayed out a little bit I'll just take a pair of channel locks and uh, squish that back together but for now we'll just finger tighten it on there put the rotor back on trying to stay out of the frame of the camera so that you guys kind of see what's what here but I don't have a fancy GoPro or anything like that I'm just kind of shooting from a cell phone so just bear with me on the, the quality I mean if my channel kind of gets goes anywhere you know gets kind of big or whatever then I'll upgrade to a, an actual camera but for now I don't really see that much. <laughs> don't squish your fingers with the old hub assembly it hurts I don't see a point in uh, buying a camera if I'm really not gonna need it because I don't get a lot of views I mean I watch YouTube a lot I like YouTube uh, I've always wanted to make videos just never did so now here's my opportunity to do it I'm always working on something I picked this car up for 400 bucks um, I mean it needs a little bit of stuff but I bought it for 400 drove it straight to a shop, and had a West Virginia State inspection done on it. The only thing that it didn't pass for were tires, so I put tires on it. So, right now, I'm in this car, $800. And, uh, I mean, I feel like it was a, a pretty decent deal. Um one big job that I'm gonna have to do with it is uh, a heater core now I'm not a hundred percent convinced that the heater core is bad in it because the previous owner said that they thought it needed a head gasket and it turned out to be a five dollar hose so they said they were smelling antifreeze they could, they could smell it burning, but they couldn't figure out where it was coming from. So they bypassed the heater core. They just ran the two hoses together. Um, so what I'm going to do is hook the heater core back up just so I have heat because it's like 18 degrees outside. It's cold. I want some heat. The worst that's going to happen is I leak coolant into my floorboard 
which, I mean, that's going to suck, but it's not the end of the world. I'll just unhook the hoses, hook them back together under the hood, order a heater core, put a heater core in it, and be done with it. So, that'll most likely be the next video we do. All right, also, one thing to note, um, usually the piston of your caliper is towards the back. So if you didn't purposely take your brake pads out like I did, they just kind of fell out, look at the back of your pads. You see that ring? That tells me right there, right out of the gate, that that's the rear pad because the uh, piston for the caliper has actually been sitting on that pad and kind of wore a little groove in it almost. Well, not really a groove, but a rust ring. So, just a quick tip if you guys didn't know that. Most people that are going to take on a job like this have some sort of mechanical inclination, if that's correct. Hutch, if you watch this video, correct me if I'm wrong. Inclination, is that a correct word? Is that correct grammar? By the way, guys, um, if you watch this video, uh, heard me mention Hutch a few times. He's a buddy of mine. He's also uh, starting out on YouTube. He's got a, a channel, Terry Hutchinson. Check him out. He's got some pretty funny stuff, some pretty cool stuff on there. Um, he's got a video on how to start a generator and him and uh, Kobe shoot a bake mod. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. A bunch of sparks and flames go flying. So check him out. Man, this would have been so much faster with air tools. But, like I said before, I don't want to wake up the kids. It's a sexy leg, isn't it? Trying to get these bolts started. Blind. Chasing them around like a freaking wounded animal. So we got all that back together. Now we're ready to put our tire back on and drop this thing on the ground. And uh, then we'll tighten up this CV. I'm going to grab the tire and get it set up on the lug nuts, turn the video back on. Alright, so we got the tire on. Just tighten up these lug nuts and then we'll drop it down. And, uh, 
tighten everything up and be done with it. Um, this car also, I'm sure with a bad wheel bearing, needs a front end alignment so I'm going to schedule an appointment with the local garage and get all that squared away but uh, you can do a front end alignment yourself I used to do them all the time myself um, I had a uh, Ford Taurus that ate tire rods like nobody's business I mean I've never had a vehicle that ate tire rods that bad um, and I made a jig to do my own front end alignment just because I was constantly replacing tie rods. I mean, it's not impossible. You can do it. But I've got so little in this car that it's not going to hurt my feelings to put it in the shop and pay 100 bucks tops to get a front end alignment. But, yeah, maybe that'll be a video that I do later on down the road. Um, we'll just make a quick down and dirty jig after the car has had a front end alignment. Just so that you can get your spacings correct the first time. So that way, anytime you use that jig, you know that it's zero point is always going to be lined up. Like you're always going to have a decent front end line. As long as the shop you take it to does a decent job. Just bracing this tire with my leg and foot just so I can get them a little better then snug before I put it down. I mean, you don't really have to do that. I just, I don't know, I'm weird about stuff. I like to do stuff weird. Alright. So, let me get our trusty torque wrench. Um, not entirely sure what the torque spec is on the, the lug nuts of this. Um, I'm just going to torque it down to the same torque specs that I torque my Jeep wheels down to. Those are 35, so 110 foot pounds will hold a 35 on. It better hold a little old Pontiac tire on. So, now I'll take a pair of vice grips and uh, fix up these clamps really quick. So give me one second, I'll get those fixed up and we'll get her torqued down. Alright, so we uh, fixed up those little clips on that nut. Now we're ready to put it on here and get it torqued down. Now the torque spec for this is like... 175 foot pounds or something crazy like that and my torque wrench doesn't go that high so I'm gonna go as far as we can go and then give it a little bit more also this car had a, a pretty big dent in the passenger fender it wouldn't it, it was so bad that it wouldn't allow the door to open uh, I just kind of popped that out just really quick. Um, I'll show you guys what it looks like now. I plan on 
fixing it, but I don't know. This is just going to be a little beater work car. Just get back and forth to work. I mean, it's not going to be a parking lot princess. It's a 2003 Pontiac Grand Am. It's kind of a basic car. Um, it is the GT Ram Air, though. So that's pretty cool. We've got the 3400 V6 in it. So it will, it will get down the road if you need it to. Alright, so that's 100 foot-pounds. Um, we'll go ahead and crank it up. My torque wrench only goes to 150 foot-pounds. So. We'll crank her to 150 with the torque wrench, and then we'll put a breaker bar on it and uh, torque it all the way down. But before we do all that, let's put it on the ground just so we don't hurt that CVX. They're stout but delicate at the same time. Careful. If you guys wonder why I'm sitting down, I got a bum leg. It gives me fits, so it's kind of hard for me to crouch sometimes. All right, that's 150. Now I did need the breaker bar and a cheater pipe to get this broke loose, so. We're going to use the breaker bar and the cheetah pipe to put it back on. Oh, God. Ah, it's tight. Holy crap. Give myself an aneurysm. So then we'll just put the center cap back on. And that is how you replace a wheel bearing in a 2003 Pontiac Grand Amp. If you like the video, subscribe, give me a like, thumbs up. We'll holler at you guys later.